Hello, my name is Dr. Tom Bennett. I'm from Kane University of New Jersey. Today we're aboard the battleship New Jersey in Camden, New Jersey. Today is 9-13-02. We're interviewing Mr. Hugh G. Dixon, who served aboard the battleship New Jersey from December 19, from November 1942 through December 1945. He served as a gunner's mate third class. Uh, Mr. Dixon, thank you for being with us today. Mm, yeah. Let I'm me start off the conversation. Um, please talk about how you got involved with the battleship New Jersey. Well, well, I'd uh, I'd been in Panama, and uh, at the time, <coughs> uh, huh. at the time, it was on the Erie, and uh, we were taking a a convoy from uh, Balboa over toward Africa, and we're going around the coast of Af uh, North South America. We got torpedoed, so uh, I was striking for gunners mate at the time. So when we, uh, after <laughs> everybody got ashore that was able, yeah, uh, Captain he upbraided everybody on the ship, whatever you were, they, he raised him one rate. <laughs> And uh, so I, I was striking for gunner's mate. I come out third class gunner's mate. I got a, a sign to come to the, well, up to Pier 92 in New York with a receiving station at the time in Staten Island. Yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, from there for reassignment, and then I got sent down here to New Jersey to uh, watch them finish building it. I was, I was one of the three men assigned to turret two at the time. At the, uh, learn everything we could from the yard birds, putting it together. And uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the chief turret captain and a uh, first class turret captain was Edders and Hannon. And then myself was, uh, and, and there were three assigned to each of the other turrets too. Uh, it's for the same reason. We basically what the crew would be built on when the ship went to sea. And, uh, uh, and once once you were aboard the ship, talk to me about some of your experiences. You started with the ship as it was launched in Philadelphia. Yeah. And then you stayed with the ship until December 1945 when it was in Japan. Mm -hmm. What experiences stand out in your mind about your service aboard the battleship New Jersey? Well, it was all good. <laughs> it was a good, good place to work. <clears throat> uh, we uh, we didn't have any big trouble with Operation Anything. The uh, the chief and the first class had both been in Pearl Harbor. And of course, I hadn't. Done, but, uh, uh, to pick and train people for the job they had to do in the turret was, was their responsibility. And they, they really carried it out. And they, of course, they took me along by the hand to try to teach me, too. <laughs> and uh, the good thing it did is one day I had to take over. And, uh, do, you do you recall some of the training that you underwent in the turret? Yes, uh huh. Did every every it? job in the turret had to, had to learn to do whatever had to be done. Any place in the turret had to be able to do that. And uh, they took the trouble to train me and uh, give me practice at it. And then when we started adding people to the turret, and we, the three of us had to uh, get about 24 people that were added to the turret to have essential jobs and give them training and practice in there. So they'd be the nucleus of the crew. Because uh, a general quarters would have about 125 more out of the deck gang come up to man the turret and the magazines with the projectile flaps and all the magazine capacity and all. Uh, uh, that's the way that the, the crew for the turret was started off and we hung together that way all the way through to the Pearl Harbor, or still uh, Japan out there. 
you recall any operations that you were on where you were firing in the turret at any enemy targets? And what was it? What were the well, conditions in the turret while you're firing? Well, everybody had a job to do, and they did it well, and they did it just, just as about as thoroughly as anybody could, I think. Uh, we used to try to go on bombarding, blowing holes in the beach for the Marines and things. You know, we uh, we try for about thirty second cadence. In other words. All three turrets would fire every 30 seconds to handle all that ammunition. And our center gun crew one time did it in 17 seconds, which is uh, pretty fast. You, know? uh, you get to think what happened on the Iowa, that uh, somebody slipped. Mm -hmm. Somebody had a that's when they had the recent explosion on the Iowa yeah. some years ago, right? Yeah. What were the conditions in the turret while you're firing? Was it hot, smoky, dirty, Well, it, we, had, we had good ventilation. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was ventilated well, and uh, it, it could get hot in there, but it wasn't, uh, wasn't uncomfortable. And <coughs> excuse me. But, uh, well, talk a little bit about life aboard ship. What were some of your experiences during World War II aboard ship that might stand out in your mind? I don't know. It's, it's, it's many years ago now, and I don't remember a lot of details of things. Uh, I remember the big turkey shoot. The Marianas oh, yeah, turkey shoot. Yeah, we, of course, we didn't have anything to do with the main battery then, but uh, we had to stand by and ready. And, uh, Talk a little bit about the Marianas turkey shoot, if you can. What do you recall about it? Well, it's, uh, it's just we got attacked by the Jap, the Jap uh, Air Force, thought they were going to come and wipe us out for for good, and uh, they put everything they could in the air, and they shot down everything that was in the air. And it was off. And it was mostly five inch and the forties and the twenty millimeters. We didn't have anything to do with that. No. It was noisy. Noisy? Yeah. What was the noise like? Talk about the noise a bit. Well, the, the constant popping and cracking of the firing of the guns. The, the five inch in particular make a lot of noise. You know. I know the 16 inch, it, <laughs> to inside the turret, it sounds like a big swoosh when it goes by, but I know it made more noise on the deck. What about, talk about the living conditions aboard the ship oh, at the time. Me. What were the living conditions like? Um, was it tightly packed? Was the food good? Well, uh, the living quarters were, were pretty well filled, all right. The, the, in fact, uh, every bunk had somebody in them. When we were in Pearl Harbor, I had a one time for ammunition and supplies. I had uh, a bunk put in a blower pocket in the center gun room blower pocket in there and I slept in there from then on. So. You slept in, in, a, in a turret? Yeah. Uh -huh. Why did you sleep in there? Because I didn't want to have to be going down in the quarters all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't went down there for to go to the restroom or close take a to shower. Your, or something. You were close to where you worked too, weren't you? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, my job was in the turret. Why, uh, that was my place to be. I had no place else to be. Yeah. What was the, the feeling or morale of the men during the war? What was their feeling toward the Japanese? What was their morale? Was it strong, weak? How would you characterize those? Well, the uh, feeling among the men was strong. And, uh, and of course, we hated anything Jap. And uh, uh, we did mostly bombarding, blowing holes on the beach for the Marines and then put the Marines ashore. And, uh, what was the attitude of the men, the morale of the men, when they heard the war is coming to an end? Do you recall that? No, well, sort of elated. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, a uh, relief. I'm glad to know it's over. No. Mm -hmm. Now, no. Uh, the New Jersey went to Tokyo Harbor. Mm -hmm. Did you have a chance to go ashore in Japan? Yes. Talk about conditions that you saw in Japan, uh, the Japanese people. What would you say about that? 
<clears throat> well, they they wouldn't give any back talk to a white man at all. That's <laughs> they just wouldn't. <laughs> they were very friendly, and uh, I got a picture of my, myself and the turret captain to relieve me, and one of the gun strikers out of the turret standing with the inside moat around the Emperor's palace behind us in the Emperor's guard house is up on a hill. I wish I had the picture with me. I don't have it. A man named Garrison was my relief. And uh, I lost all track of him. I don't know whatever happened to him. But, uh, I found a man named Garrison through the uh, uh, paper that's put around. But it, it turned out to be a different Garrison. He said it wasn't him at all. <laughs> so, uh, Garrison and I went went on liberty together in, in Japan. Uh, yeah. How did you get back from Japan back to the States? On the Quincy. Or, or, I guess it was the Quincy. I keep thinking it was. <laughs> As a, uh, uh, come back to San Francisco and then on the railroad across the Jacksonville on that, get paid all. What was your reaction when you got back in the United States? How, do you recall how you felt when you got home, saw your family for the first time? Well, I was glad to be home. Yeah. I went home and went back to where I grew up and started out from there. Yeah. How did years later, when you look back on your experiences aboard the ship, how has that affected your life over the years, serving on the battleship New Jersey? Well, it's probably been a, it had an effect on uh, my attitude on a lot of things, but very likely. Can you describe some of those? How it's impacted you? No, I, I, it's hard to say, I guess, because uh, I, I got to work in, on airplanes, and flying airplanes and things too. With uh, uh, I was a crop duster for four years. And then uh, the licensed air aircraft and engine mechanic, and I uh, worked for different non sked airlines for a while, and then I worked for Eastern Airlines for uh, a whole number of years uh, about 31 and a half or two or something like that uh, before I retired. How do you feel about being back in New Jersey today? Oh, it's wonderful, like going home. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's, How's it like going home? Yeah, it's sure. There's a few things that changed in there, but not very much. There's a lot of it still there, just like it was. Mm -hmm. I have another question. You mentioned that you were aboard the USS Erie. Yes. And it was sunk. The Erie was what type of ship? It was a, a seagoing gunboat. They built two of them, the Erie and the Charleston. Mm -hmm. They, uh, were not big ships at all, but uh, they were experimental things. They were built back in the 30s, I guess, and they uh, were thin hull. They had four-inch open mount guns on them. Uh, but the outline, I guess in a periscope, it would have looked like a cruiser from the shape of it. So uh, we got uh, torpedoes thrown at us a couple of times that went underneath. They just slid on by. They probably thought it was deeper. Uh -huh. was the cruiser so they, uh, that U boat captain must have got looking at his James Manual and figured out he was, what he was looking at. And he sent one porpoise on top of the water that blew the side out of the ship. Yeah. What was it like to be torpedoed? What were your, do you recall your experiences when the, the hit occurred and you, after the. Well, hit? I was pretty well shook. But, uh, I was I just a 17 year old kid joining the Navy. <laughs> and, uh, it was my first time away from home like that, so the, but the, uh, they were sending a whale boat ashore with uh, a bunch of people in. I was part of it. I went, went ashore with a whale boat. Uh, Did they lose any men aboard the Erie from that? They time? lost some. I don't, I don't remember just how many. And, uh, I think a cook and some others. At, uh, there you go. Final question. Is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't? Anything you think is important to talk about? Uh, your experiences after the ship, on the ship? Is there anything else you want to tell us as a final closing comment? 
I don't know if you, <laughs> you don't want to talk about admirals. They, they sure used to do. they well, used to admiral. walk a deck behind the ship. Or, sure, talk about uh, Admiral Spruance, Admiral Halsey. Uh huh. Do you have any reflections on those people? Well, we, we no, we didn't have much to do with them. We'd, we'd come out of the tail hatch, and Admiral Spruance mm -hmm. would be out there in his sweatsuit, walking in the sun. And he'd step aside when he'd come down out of the tail hatch. You know. If Halsey was out there, he wouldn't. He, he calls you wouldn't step aside. No. He had two Marines stand there with their M1s and rigid attention. And, uh, Spruant said, uh, send them guys below. I don't need them with all these sailors around here. So, yeah. Who did the men, did, did you like either one of these men better as a commanding uh, officer? Well, I don't know. I personally, I like Spruant. I like his attitude more than anything else. But, uh, he was the one we first reported to when we went to the Pacific, and then, and we we carried the admiral, uh, him and uh, Halsey both. When uh, we go back to Pearl Harbor for ammunition and supplies, and they change admirals and staffs, and we go back to sea with a different uh, fleet member. Uh, the Japs thought we had two brand new fleets. <laughs> they didn't know it was the same one. We were swapping numbers. Expl what do you mean? Explain that. The Japanese thought there's two separate fleets? Yes, so we had two complete new fleets and uh, we come out with a different fleet number and uh, uh, I so guess it took them a while to realize it was the same fleet. It was just We just changed the numbers on the fleet number every time they changed admirals. And, uh, 